Welcome to MacroCode. If you are new to this channel, consider subscribing. So today we are going to proceed with our Airblast management system. So as you can see, we have our tickets. So here you can create tickets. So you can see we have the, if you add new ticket, we have the title, description, priority, and the status of the ticket. So we can just type in some text here, uh, the priority, then we can create. So when you create, you're able to see we have a success message and we have all the tickets here created. Then we have the ticket comments. So here you can actually add a comment. Then you provide the comment, then you tie it to a ticket. So you can tie it to this ticket and you create the comment. Then whenever you finalize that from the tickets as well, you can also see the comments per ticket. So you can see here, if I go to access to application and I click it, then I'm able to see the only uh, comments that is based for that particular ticket. Then you have the ticket uh, categories. So you can add a new category. For example, you say it's a mouse and provide the name of the of the category, say mouse uh, or it's a network. So you can just uh, provide that. Then you'll be able to see we have the ticket categories. Then from here, you can also see we have a section where you can see the subcategories by the uh, category. So if I click subcategories, I'm able to see the category only for subcategories only for the hardware tickets. So these are the issues. The, these are the subcategories, the mouse, the UPS, hard disk, a shredder, and the rest. Then you can also see the whole list of subcategories. As you can see here, you can see the whole list. Then you have the audit trail. So every time we are creating uh, something within our system, then you're able to see the action, the ticket, and the, the module the affected table, the timestamp, the IP address, and the user. So you can see the user is actually creating that particular information. Then you also have the system users. These are the users within our application, and we'll be able to see then the error logs. I'll be able to show how we'll be able to add the error logs using uh, something interesting, which we'll cover on our next uh, video. So today, I want us to see something. You see, when we are creating a new ticket, there are some information that we are missing. I want us, whenever we are creating a ticket, you choose the category and even the subcategory. So we are going to modify our model. So that is the ticket model. So if we go to tickets model, I'll, you'll see that we only, have, we only have the ID, the title, description, status, priority, created on, created by, and the rest. We can also uh, kind of provide the display names. So I'll just do display name. So that is the data annotation. So we'll say display name, provide that. Then you can say this is a number. So here we need to import something. So if I click that, I'm using component model. Then we can also do the same for the title. So I'm also having here say title. Then here also we have uh, the description. So here you do description. Then here we'll also do status. So here you just do status. Then you can do also priority. So I'll just do priority. So then we'll also do created by. So this is created by. Then you can see here as created on. So this is created on. So then I want us to add some things. So I want us to add the, I want us to add the category. So here I'll say ticket category, category. Then I'll say here, so this will be an int. Then here we'll say category ID. So this category ID is a foreign key that you are actually getting them from the ticket categories. So we need to do here ticket category, and we'll just do this as a category here. Then, so there is one thing interesting here. So we should not be saving the category. So what we should be saving is the subcategory. So we should save the smallest unit. So here we'll just do subcategory. Subcategory ID, then here we are going to do ticket subcategory. So this is what we should be saving actually. We should not save the category ID. So, so here we'll just do ticket category. Then we just do here subcategory and that is it. So here we'll just uh, do here ticket subcategory. So once we do that, 
we should now be able to add migrations. You know, after tempering with our model, the next thing is to add migrations. So I'll just do uh, NuGet Market Manage Console. Then here we are going to do add migration. Then we say subcategory details. So press enter. Then you can see our details being created. So for those who are new to this channel and you have not subscribed to our channel, consider subscribing. We noted 90% of you guys are watching our videos and you have not subscribed. So if you're one of them, please consider subscribing so that you also help us do more. So here we have done something. So this is our subcategory ID affecting this table and it's actually adding this column. So you see it's adding the column and it's actually providing us with the foreign keys and the things. So the next thing is to, we can now do update database. So update database. So when we update the database, it will now add that column to our database. So once we are done with that, then we need to do something. So alter table, so you see, table column. So conflicted with the foreign key constraint, the conflict occur in database. So what we need to do, I want us to remove the data that we have. So I want us to remove the data because, so let's just do this because that is what we had done. I want us to make it nullable because some of the data that we have don't have that. So let's undo the migration. So how do you undo the migrations? You just say remove, remove migration. So this will, will remove the latest added migration. So you can see it has undone. Then what we need to do now, let's do this as a nullable. Then you can add the migration again. So you can clear. Then we can add the migration. So if you add it, then it will add now. Then we should now be able to add the update the database. So we've just added that as nullable and you can see it has also created and this is now nullable. So nullable is true. Then we can now update the database. Update the database. Then you should be able to see our database updated. So you can see this is okay now. So the one thing, if you don't want to have this as nullable, you can actually now clear the data that you've just created. So you should actually uh, clear the data so that you allow this to be added. So once we've done that, remember when we are doing the create, uh, create a creation of the ticket. So on the ticket, we should now add the subcategory here. So here we should now add the subcategory. So here I'll just do, I'll, I'll just do that. Add this here, then you should now choose here as a subcategory. So we should have the subcategory and here we should have this as a subcategory, subcategory. But now this one is a drop down. So let's pick the drop down from our ticket uh, subcategories. That is where we added the, we have a drop down. So how this is how the drop down is defined. Where is it? Under the ticket subcategories. Yeah. So this is how the, so that is the creates subcategories. So we can actually get it from the comments, I think so. So this is our select. So I'm going to copy this, then have it on our add ticket under create. So here we'll just add the, so it'll say this is a ticket subcategory say subcategory ID. So here we'll do subcategory ID. Then here we'll be having the, so we should be having the subcategories. But now there's one thing that we need to do. You see, the, we have these as a ticket uh, model, but I want us to use the sub mod, the view model. So I think we have, so we can create another view model here. So we can create another view model here. And I want us to add that as a, so you can add that as a, so you'll say ticket view model. So you'll say ticket view model. 
the reason as to why I'm doing this, I want to introduce, so I'm I'm going to copy, I'm going to copy the details from the our ticket model. So I, I want to show you why I'm doing that. So I'm going to copy all these de details here. Here. I'll just copy it here. Then paste it where on our ticket view model. So if I paste it here, so I want to introduce another property called uh, uh, I want to introduce a subcategory. So I'll just introduce here a category ID. So I'll just do category ID. And I say maybe this is not this is not nullable. Then I'll do here. So I'll do here, this is not nullable. Then you can see I've introduced now the ticket category, ticket category, but it's it's not affecting our database. So I, I'm introducing this property, but I don't want to be in our database. That's why I have my view model. Then here, I can now say within this one, remember what we did on our ticket subcategories, we can have now the list of our tickets within this particular view model. So I'll say here, this should also give us the list of the ticket. If we do that, then you can say this is tickets. So this ticket, this view model, we can now reuse it on our controller. That is the ticket controller. So here, we can always even add these as a, so we can change. So let me just show you something. So I'll just have the ticket view model and I say this is our VM. Then you can say here, our tickets is vm.tickets. So we'll say, so this should be vm. Then here we say tickets dot ticket. So we'll say tickets is equals to that. Then what we are returning is our vm. Then on our, on our index, we should now change our index to actually reflect our view model. So I'm going to remove this and I'm going to say this is view model and I'm going to have this as a, our ticket view model. So if you do that, then we'll be having an error here. So here you'll change this now to tickets dot tickets. Then everything should be okay downwards. So the same thing we now need to do under our create action. Instead of uh, Instead of doing, instead of having the models ticket, we are now having the models, that is the view models. Then we have the ticket view model. So after doing that, now all our properties here should be okay. And we should now have another property, which is not within our database, but it is called the category. So we'll say here, category ID, you see this? So this is now the list that you are going to get. So here you'll say the category ID. So how do we get the list of categories? If you check on our controllers for comments, we have how we are pulling the ticket. You see this? This is how we are getting the list, view data, the ticket, and we get all the tickets. We, we need to do the same thing for our tickets on the create action. You see here? So we are going to pull the list of categories. So here we'll say category ID, category ID. Then here we'll say under ticket categories. Then we say ID. So I don't know what is the, let's just check on that view model, on the, on the model, how we are naming. So we have the ID code and the name. So you can take the name. So here, We'll be taking the name of the, then you can remove this. So I'll show you how we have that. So here you can now copy this and add it on our create action down here. So you can say then, but now here we'll pass the ticket. That is the ticket, ticket dot. So, so I'll show, yeah, so there's something that we need to, check here but for now let's just have it that way then if we run our app so let's just launch our app so before even launching our app let me just remove something on our create action so let me stop it
Then if we go to create our create uh, tickets, I want us to remove this view data for the subcategories. Then I'll show you how this is added. So if we launch our app, we should now be able to see the list of the categories. And remember, we are not saving the category ID. We are saving the subcategories. So what we need on our application, whenever you select a category, you automatic, automatically get the subcategories. So if you go to tickets, remember we have changed how the list is uh, given to us and you can see it's already working. So if we add new, you see under the cat ticket category, we have the list of categories. So this is the list of the category. But now, we also have the list of ticket subcategory. If we select the ticket like the category, we need to get we need to get the subcategory, the respective subcategory of that particular ticket. So how do we do that? Remember, we are not saving the ticket category, but we are saving the ticket subcategory, and we should not be saving both. So that is a very poor way of doing things. So we should actually be saving the smallest unit. So but now when to get to this subcategory, you need to provide the user with the main category. If they select, then it will filter with the main category and we should be able to get the subcategories here. So I want us to define something before even doing that so that we complete that particular section. I want us to go to our controllers and I want us to introduce another controller, a general controller that will be, help us now to be getting those details. So I want us to call that controller data. So let's just add controller, then call it data. So an empty controller, then call it. Uh, so it's kind of an API. So let's just call it uh, data, API controller, call it data and add it. So this is how the, the controller looks like. So I'm going to remove some of the, I can actually leave it. So I want us to uh, add the application DB context. So we can copy some of the details on our actions here. So this is it. So go to the data controller and you can have the, you can have the constructor. So you have the data context and everything. So on this particular controller, this is now where we are going to have all the data that we want. Whenever we select anything, then we should be able to retrieve the data from that particular controller. So it's actually kind of a, you can have it as a controller. You can actually have it as a, as a normal controller. Let's just call this a controller, remove the others. Then from this controller, we need to have the get methods. So for example, here we want to have the, we can change this to get uh, ticket, sub categories so you say get ticket sub categories then here we want to return so here i'll just say return say async then you can say task then this task we want a json result so here we want a json result and here we need to return a json result so here i'm going to do a try uh, catch then we do that so here i'm going to have a list of so we need to get the list of uh, so you can say variable categories subcategories i mean subcategories sub categories is equals to just use that as i'll say await then underscore context so that is our context. Then we can say dot subcategories. We want the subcategories, right? Then we can say dot order. We can actually, so let me just use the one dot per line rule so that it actually, so you can say order by. So you can actually order. So you can say order by. This one you can order by something. You can say order by name. Then, once you order that, we can now say here, we can do here in just before order, we can say where we can filter. So whenever we select our main category, we shall actually require an int ID. 
So that ID should be the category ID. So here we will say where x dot, we'll say where we do that, say x dot, sorry. So this will be x dot, dot, this will be this way, sorry. Let me say x dot subcategory. So you say category ID, where the category ID is the our ID that has been supplied. So after you have that, then you need to do to list, to list a sink. So that is where now we have our list of subcategories. So that list of things, we need to return it. So we now need to return our JSON. So we'll say return JSON, then subcategories. Then here, because it, we have an error, we can always return a JSON that is empty. We'll say JSON. We can do a new empty JSON. So we'll just do that. And if we close it, then we are now okay. So we should always get a list of our categories. So here, this is a get method and you can always say we allow anonymous. So that is it. So this will always give us a list of our subcategories. So if we, so before we actually do anything, I want us now to, to get uh, to something else. I want us to create a folder for our JSONs. That is our JavaScripts. So I'm going here to create a folder called customs. Custom JS. So we are going to call this as custom JS. So we are going to create a custom JavaScript that will help us now to retrieve that those information. So there's one thing that you are going to do so that you actually get all these information. So what I want us to do, let's create a, a J JavaScript here. So I'm going to create a new client side library then you're going to no, want to create a file new new item all right let me just do that new you can say new item show all the templates so then you can create a javascript so I want here a JavaScript file. So you can always say, you can call this uh, ticket, ticket system. So let's just call ticket system.js. So that is our JavaScript file that has been created here, ticket system.js. So here I want us so to create this uh, data context. So we've actually selected ID and the name. So we are assigning them that. Then we are going to pick this thing to list. Then now on our ticket JS, so I've actually remodified this. So we have the category ID dot get subcategories. So this also, uh, if you come to our create, create tickets, so I have my category ID, category ID, then I have uh, this, I get subcategories. Then we are going to go to data, get subcategory IDs, and we are going to get the value of the category ID. Then this value, uh, before doing anything, we can actually reset the subcategories and assign this uh, holding value. Then whenever we get the JSON, we can log the JSON or you can actually uh, see the values. Then here, we are going to have uh, the ID as the value and the name should actually be that. So if we relaunch this application, so th this is our JSON, our JavaScript. If you want it, you see, you can actually hold and uh, follow how this has been created. So I'll not be taking more time to create this. As you can see, you are able to see that. But in case you want this source code, you can always pull and you can claim it. Then you can also uh, reuse this uh, particular code. So if you go to our categories now, we should be able to select a category and it should give us the subcategories of that particular category. So if I just go to tickets, sorry. So if I go to tickets, add new ticket, then I provide the details, uh, the name, the status, the priority. And if I select uh, adware, my subcategories should only be adware. You see mouse, uh, UPS, add disk, uh, issues and uh, shredder. If I choose software, 
then my software issues should actually be uh, automatically pre-populated here. So that is it. So if you now do that, then you, when you create it, so let's just go to our create action. So this is our JavaScript for those who want to follow how this is created. And you can see for the data controller, these uh, we only have one endpoint that we are getting the values. So if we go to our tickets action and under create, you see it is actually expecting the ticket uh, model. But here we change this. So we are expecting the ticket view model. So we are expecting the ticket view model. Then on the ticket view model, we now need, we want to ensure that we are changing this. So for now, I'm going to define, uh, we'll say variable. Uh, so I'll say ticket VM. Then I'll say ticket. So this will be ticket is equals to, or we can actually say, actually say a ticket. So ticket is equals to ticket, then we say new. Sorry, say new. So if we do that, we have initialized that. So what we need is uh, we need to assign the values of our ticket now. Dot ID will be that one. Then if we just do the title, so the title, we'll also take the title from our VM. Then so this is a long way of doing things. So I'll I'll be showing you something called Automapper then we'll be able to see how that works. So in our next video, stay in touch so that you see, instead of doing this one-to-one -one mapping, we'll be actually looking how you can do that using Automapper. So that is the status. Then here is the status. And you can see after that here, we have the, we can do the priority. Then this priority. So then after that, you can now proceed and assign the rest and you save the details. So there's one thing that you are missing. So we need to assign also our main focus for today, the subcategory ID. So if we assign that, you can actually check it from our subcategory ID. So you can put in a breakpoint here, then we see how this works. So I'm going to launch our app now. Then if I launch that, we should now have these uh, ticket details uh, given the values from our uh, view model. So for those who are following this video and you've not subscribed, please consider subscribing, like our video and comment down below. So you notice 90% of you guys are watching our videos and you've not subscribed. So if I come to tickets, add new, then I say, so I just provide in some information here, then the status, then if I say adware, then our subcategories here, we are expecting only adware. If I choose mouse and create, then you'll notice that under our ticket now, we have our values mapped. You see, we now have our subcategory ID, which is ID one. Then all these other details are submitted. So if we save, then you see our details has been saved successfully. So assuming we want to see the subcategories from this particular area, we can always do that by come to our index. Then now under index, we can always include now dot include we now have our subcategory. So I'll just do X, sorry, I'll just do T equals to T dot. So I'll just do T, then this one, then I'll say T dot subcategory. So if I do that, then we'll always have the subcategory value. So if we go to tickets under index, then I can add another. So here I can say now, instead of that, I can add another do that, then I'll say subcategory ID. Then here we'll always now get the, I'm going to copy that. Then here I'll do subcategory. Then I'll do the name. So this will give us the name of the subcategory that the user has created. So if we launch our app, we now, we should now be able to see the subcategory details and our list of our tickets. So that is how you are able to create a subcategory and tie it to our tickets. And remember, we are choosing the subcategories from our category of uh, the category list. So if we go to tickets, uh, tickets, then just do new. So, and uh, just let's add another one. So I'm going to provide some weird values. Then here I'll just say hardware. So if I create it, can remove this breakpoint. So if I create that, you can see 
So you can see there are some values that does, doesn't have the subcategories, but the two values that we've just added, you can be able to see them down here. We now have the mouse issues and the hardware uh, that is our disk issues. So that is one way of uh, creating the subcategories. So and you can see all these now is able to be created and we are okay with the values. So that is it for today. On our next video, we are going to look uh, more on uh, adding the tickets uh, statuses and the priorities so that users doesn't give us a weird values, but also select them from a list of what we have just done today. So if you like this video, comment down below and see you in our next video. Bye. Thank you.